everyone, this is a video tutorial to help you understand how to determine if a compound has an asymmetric center. So the first thing is just to define an asymmetric center. So an asymmetric center is going to be a carbon, specifically, in a compound that is sp3 hybridized and has four different groups attached to it. Now you can have other atoms like nitrogen that are asymmetric centers, but because of a rapid inversion that happens, we typically don't look at them. We're usually only going to be looking at carbon specifically. So let's take a look at a few examples and see if we can figure out where the asymmetric centers are. Okay, so let's take a look at a condensed structure and see if we can find the asymmetric centers in it. Remember, our asymmetric centers are going to be sp3 hybridized and they're going to have four different groups attached. So over here, if we move along, we see first this carbon. It is sp3 hybridized, however, it has three of the same groups, hydrogen present on it, so it can't be an asymmetric center. I move to this carbon. Now this carbon is the type of carbon that usually tricks people on exams because you look at it and you see four groups. It's not though, because remember this group here is a methyl and that's a methyl as well. The minute you have two or more of the same group, you definitely don't have an asymmetric center. We're not worried about bromine. We move on to this carbon. It is sp3 hybridized, but it has two hydrogens attached to it, so it can't be. I look at this carbon. Now this is another one that sometimes sneaks in and people mark it as an asymmetric center. The issue with it though, it's sp2 hybridized, so it also cannot be an asymmetric center. Over here I take a look at this carbon. This carbon is sp3 hybridized and it does have four different groups. It has hydrogen, the OH, the methyl, and it has this entire group. So in the case of figuring asymmetric centers, you want to look at the whole group, not just the immediate attachments. So though this is a carbon and this is a carbon, they're not the same because this has three H's attached to it and this has this whole mess attached to it here. So this carbon here would be an asymmetric center. Let's take a look at another example. So now let's take a look and see if we can find the asymmetric centers in a line structure notation. So over here, the same rules apply. We need to find an sp3 carbon with four different groups attached to it. So over here, remember, what's not drawn in the line structure are the hydrogens. So this carbon at the end would have three H's attached to it, definitely not an asymmetric center. Now you take a look at this carbon, sp3 hybridized. Remember, there is an H, it's just not shown. So over here, what you might want to do is draw it in if you need to remind yourself that there is that fourth attachment. So I've got an H, an OH, a methyl group, and then this entire group attached. So this here would definitely be an asymmetric center. Now I take a look at this position here. So once again, there are four groups attached. Remember that the hydrogen is hidden. So I've got an H, a BR, and now remember you look at this group and you look at that group. And if you can look at this, you'll see that this group and that group are identical to one another, which means that this is not an asymmetric center at all. So now I move on. Once again, just draw on the H to make sure that we can see it. So I've got an H, an OH, a methyl, and then I have this entire group attached as well. So it's fine that this carbon and this carbon have the same four groups because within themselves, there are four different groups attached. So this here would also have another asymmetric center in it. And then lastly, once again, that would have three H's, so that's not an asymmetric center. So in this compound here, we have two asymmetric centers contained. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, so now let's take a look at a ring structure and find all the asymmetric centers that we have in it. So if we take a look at this, there's obviously a lot of things going on with the ring. All you want to do is just take it one step at a time. So if I take a look at this case, let's start with the chlorine attachment here to this carbon. So remember, it's implied that there is an H attached. So the H's aren't always drawn in, but they are implied. So if I take a look at that, we need to figure out, do I have multiple attachments? So I know I've got the CL and the H. Now what you want to do is move around the ring. So I'm going to start at this carbon and I'm moving around the ring. So here I move out. If I look at these spots here, this carbon and this carbon are equivalent to one another. They're both attached to a methyl group. So those are still the same. Continue to move around the ring. I move down here. These carbons are both CH2s. They're still equivalent. So at this point, my chains are still the same. So I'm going to move around again. I wind up ending at the same point which means that this carbon, if I view this chain and this chain, moving in this direction here versus this direction there, are completely equivalent to one another. So that is not an asymmetric center because this chain and this chain of the ring are viewed as being the same structures. So let's take a look at a different position. So now let's take a look at this methyl, draw on that hydrogen just to remind us that it is there. And we're gonna do the same thing, move around the ring. So here's my carbon with the methyl and the H. 
Now I'm going to move around the ring. So here I start my point and I come out and now I compare this carbon here to this one there. So this carbon would be a CH2, this carbon is a CH with a CL attached. Those two positions are not equivalent to one another. That would mean that this position here is an asymmetric center because this chain and that chain are not identical to one another. Do the same thing over here. So now on this position, I've got this huge group attached and then I also have the H and I move around my ring. Start here and I move up, same, CH2, CH2, move up, identical, move up, I'm at the same point. That is not an asymmetric center either. Doing the same idea for this guy, right? Move around your ring. So I've got the methyl and I've also got a hydrogen. So I'll draw the H in and I move around the ring. So I go from here out, CH2 versus CCL right there. So these two are different. So this here would also be an asymmetric center. So that's how you'd figure it out within the ring. But when you're doing ring structures, don't forget to look at substituents like this case that are really big and see if there are any substituents hiding in there that are going to be asymmetric. So over here, I see that this group can't be asymmetric because it has two H's. I look at this group, it has an H, a methyl, an OH, and it has this entire thing attached to it. So here, hiding in my substituent is another asymmetric center. So that's what you're going to deal with in this particular case. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, so now let's take a look at a Fisher projection and find our asymmetric centers. The same rules apply regardless of the format of the structure, sp3 hybrid with four different groups attached to it. So over here we know for sure this carbon is not going to be one because it has three H's attached to it. So then I look at this carbon. So remember, whenever you have an intersection, there's a carbon sitting there. So this carbon has an H, an ethyl, a methyl, and then this entire group sitting below it. So this one here would definitely be an asymmetric center, four different groups. This one here has a methyl, an H, this bottom part and this top part, all different from each other, so another asymmetric center. This one over here would not be an asymmetric center. So careful you don't automatically assume that if it's sitting in one of those positions at an intersection, it is one, because here we have a methyl and we have another methyl. So this one does not have four different groups, so this would not be asymmetric center. So this particular projection would have two asymmetric centers. Let's take a look at one more. Okay, so let's figure out the asymmetric centers in a perspective formula. Remember, in a perspective formula, that's where you're going to be shown whether or not uh, substituents are coming out of the plane of the board on a wedge or into the plane of the board on a hatched wedge. So as always, the rules are the same. SP3 hybridized with four different groups attached. So if I take a look at this carbon here, this has three implied hydrogens, three of the same group, definitely not asymmetric. I take a look at this one. So now in this case here, it has a methyl, an H that's implied, this whole group, and this. Now this is a case where people often get tricked because don't forget that is also a CH3. So this carbon has two of exactly the same group attached to it, so it's not an asymmetric center. I move down here, so now I've got OCH3, I also have the implied hydrogen, and then I have this group and this group attached. Now these groups are identical. When you're figuring out whether or not there's an asymmetric center, perspective doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that this methyl is coming out and that this methyl is going in. All we're doing is looking and seeing what is attached. So this group and this group, as far as attachments are concerned, are identical as well. So that's also not an asymmetric center. I take a look at this last case and it's going to work out to be the same situation. It has a methyl, an implied hydrogen, and then here also, don't get tricked, there's a methyl sitting there. So this one also has no asymmetric center. So overall this entire compound has zero asymmetric centers.